Peter Mel for the call. Paige Harab up and riding, live action. Hooks it on the back end. That's going to be the start for Paige Harab in her matchup against Carissa Moore. So we'll get through some replays, Pete. Well, and this is uh, Paige's back end. She has got herself a very vertical approach. That one not quite as vertical. Carissa being one of the best of all time. So she knows this is going to be a difficult one. Wind up for more oh, big man. layback slash. Wow. Well, there's some uh, incentive right there. <laughs> she just annihilated that section. That was massive. It was going to be one maneuver, but we have not seen anything like that today. But a nice one single maneuver until this happens because that, a little bit more acceleration, you'll see a, a significant difference between these two scores. Oh, we got live action here, Kipes. Parabon, wave number two, just has to ease through that first turn, tapers off, and no more potential on that wave. 4.33 was the opener. And I've gotten lots of compliments on this thing, too, yeah, by the way. It's a good-looking parka, Pete. Yeah, thank you. Carissa Moore just missed time there. No opportunity for her third wave, and that's just going to be a half a point ride for Carissa Moore. 29 minutes, 35 seconds on the countdown. We started with a 35-minute clock in these matchups. It's on the back half. It's the last few opportunities to either get yourself into those finals or wins to go for those world titles or for qualification. Vert there for Harrell. Similar to the 4-3-3 again. And watch as she connects with the lip. The maneuver she had done on her first wave was under the lip. Chris Moore right behind her. Scratches into this right-hander. Looking down the line. Finds a barrel. Needs to fight out of it and cannot do so. Well, another comparison we can have for Paige uh, compared to the one single maneuvers that she had earlier. This one more connected with the lip. Anything's Anything possible. Happen. Anything's possible. Yeah, the rubber band. Here we go. Chris Amore on the left-hander. Big hook. Little over-rotates, but makes up for that. Finds the shoulder again for another second turn. Chris Amore looking for a 2.93 to retake the lead. We'll see if she's going to get that. Judges deliberating. Second look at the left. Uh, she's going to get it. Um, first turn here. And that's one of the things that we'll see surfers do today. With the less powerful conditions, you're going to start to see the surfers trying to overpower the wave. And sometimes that could be mistakes. Not here for Carissa. She goes vertical into it. But you can see pushing pretty darn hard. Got a little awkward on the turn out of it. Still going to be the number needed to get herself over uh, Paige Harab at this point in the heat. Uh, there still will be waves. It's just trying to find those open face waves. But like this mid-tide is probably your best opportunities are right now. Just a stop, a start and stop for Paige Harab. No harm, no foul. Not going to change the situation. What did change the situation is the last ride for Carissa Moore. A 4.93. Moore takes the lead. 22 minutes and 30 seconds on the countdown. Good possibility for Paige. She's very adept going both forehand as well as backhand. And here she is. He's utilizing the forehand on this left. Whitewater face, slashes through that whitewater, kicks out before that oncoming section, looking for a 6.33. I don't know if that wave had a 6.33 in it, Peter. What do you watch? Exactly that from Chris Amore, picking up a ton of speed and gets into this section. And look at the timing. You know, all that speed, pumping the board, getting as fast as she possibly can, and then into the lip where she redirects the fins, punches the nose down underneath it. That's committed surfing. It's going to be another good number for her. It's these rights kind of coming into that deeper area. There is that rip bowl zone that we've seen a lot of opportunity on the bigger days. Um, so we'll see how this plays out with this tide dropping out. Quick up and out for Carissa Moore. There's a, a lot of participation by our fans. I mean, we've got our number one fan down there, Dolly Land. She's been uh, there every day in her little corner. And I, I would be bummed if I come to Portugal and not see her sitting in that corner. Here we go. Replay. Chris Amore. Well, now this would be a little bit better. Now we're going to start seeing combination of major moves. Oh, that would have been a, that would have been the best number of the heat for sure had she pulled down that second maneuver. Otherwise, now at this point, it's going to be a throwaway score. That. Oh, executing a nice turn on the backhand. Paige Harab continues to surf her way through. Can she get the finish? And she does. So nice challenge. On the backhand, again, heels pressing on the bottom turn, gets the single maneuver there, and here are some placement turns. But a completed ride, two maneuvers. We have yet to see one completed like this. That was a nice turn, too. She got full commitment by putting that board back into the hook, but the wave not super steep. And then the finish here off the closeout. Fairly dynamic, but not ultra. Is Carissa lining up down the line, kicks out, wants to keep priority over Paige Harab in the final seven minutes of this matchup. Top six off of that qualifying series get a chance to surf in the 2020 Championship Tour, and we also have one injury wild card to live action, under three minutes remaining. And Paige Harab up, out, 
Nothing's going to change with that wave. Clock continues to tick down. For some more, trolling the lineup. You put a, you want to put out a fire? Yeah. Put a bomb in it. Blows it out. Kind of what happened uh, recently with the weather. Arab up and out. And We're thank you for that explanation. We got Kurt here from Surfline doing a great job, but you're actually Surfline's number one mascot. Who's going to meet Carissa in the quarterfinals? We'll find out when we come back. It's going to be a matchup between Joanne DeFay and Brisa Hennessy.